happy morning, happy morning, happy morning. It is a beautiful day today. And we are going to rejoice and share with you a couple that has been married almost 67 years. Now, they're not live in the studio. I actually went to their home and visited with them. Um, Jenny and Sandra and I went, and we had such a lovely, lovely visit with two very, very special people. And if you live in Cherokee County and you've been around any time at all, you know James and Lucille Rich. You are going to get to meet two amazing, amazing people as they are today. What a precious, precious privilege. And we're going to share that in just a few minutes. But we're going to share right now a little bit about what's going on in Pickens County this weekend. And I want to challenge each of you to come out on March the 31st. This is the doors will open about 5, 4.30 or 5, and there will be hors d'oeuvres and drinks and things that you can do and hang out and get to know people. And the concert, which is Connor Lohr, starts at 6 p.m. And uh, it's from 6 to 7.30, so it's an hour and a half concert. And this is raising money and, and gathering, gathering support for our veterans in Pickens County. The American Legion, Post 149, is responsible for this. I want you to be there. There's going to be a huge gift bag to give away that has wine, t-shirts, CDs, goodies from Jasper Drugstore, all kinds of cool things, a value of over $200. And you can buy uh, a, a ticket to win that. And it's going to be very, very simple at the door. Simple, simple, let's raise money for our veterans. This is going to be a really cool... And Laura Mays sent a bottle of wine, and I think it's pretty good wine, so it's going to be in there too. It's going to be a fun night, and I challenge you, make plans. If you want to go out and eat supper early, or if you want to come and have hors d'oeuvres and something to drink, and then eat after the concert, but come to Chattahoochee Tech, and let's support our veterans. Now, on that subject, 20 years ago, on April the 10th, this is what the Pickens County Progress had. This is, we had a rally in downtown at the courthouse, and this is supporting our troops. Remember when we used to get together and rally and support our troops? Well, we did that, and what happened, and why did we forget that? Because this is supporting our troops. The two people that I remember the most there that day were uh, George and Ray McLaughlin. Precious, precious, I still have a picture of them there in front of the courthouse. It was amazing. But this is how we used to support our troops. We used to make it known that we supported our military. We used to have events. And I wish I had my glasses with me. I don't know that I can read this. But this is an open letter to the... Um, oh, this is to the Dixie Chicks when they were being so against our military and against our war and 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 this is I'm, I'm going to see if we can scan this and I can make this public because I think it's it needs to be on my Facebook page now so we're going to try to reduce it and scan it so you can read it but it says stand up for America that's what we were doing 20 years ago we were standing up for America we were supporting our soldiers we were supporting our military and this is truly a full page ad that we did with the Pickens County Progress, and it is supporting our troops. It was also during the time that we lost Noah Harris, we lost David Collins, we lost so many local young men, and, and sadly women. And uh, again, this is the Pickens County Progress. This is how, this is why we love local newspapers, all the local newspapers we could get the word out. And you sit down weeks later and you read this. Y'all, this is 20 years later. My daughter had saved this. And when I was going through her stuff this weekend, I found this. And I said, I have to share it with my viewers and I have to remind you because we used to be, who was that president that said we needed to be a kinder, uh, nicer nation? Yeah, somebody did and they need to know it. And this, this is what the opening to this says. The support of our troops and Saturday's rally was great. A special thank you to Dan Westbrook, who is a Vietnam vet, and Maxine Moore. Dan did a wonderful, heartfelt job, and his support for our country was so overwhelming. Until Saturday, I had no idea he was a Vietnam veteran. The number of vets who came to be honored and came to support the troops now in harm's way was wonderful. Way to go, Jasper. This is so awesome because the um, the... 
courthouse courtyard was full. It was amazing, and it was a way to support our troops. This is the Pickens County Progress. This is why we still love local newspapers. You can put it on Facebook. You can put it on Twitter. You can do whatever you want to with it, but you can't save it like you can these. Now, my favorite thing that I have um, is something that I did in honor and in memory of mothers, and I did this on May the 1st, 2003, 20 years ago, exactly 20 years ago. It was my grandmother's birthday on April the 29th. She and Dale Earnhardt happened to be born the same day, not the same year, but the same day. Happy birthday to Granny in memory of Laura Trammell Gilreath, who was my bestie. You know, there's, there's some grandmothers that you just say, eh, I go, get to go see Granny and I like her and da-da-da-da-da. I adored my grandmother. Each day as I reflect over the past, I think of many days. Mother gave me a gift last Mother's Day that meant so much to me. It hangs over my bed and I read it daily. I want to read it to y'all. This is something that my mama gave me. I thank the Lord for you today, for hands that give so much, for your kind and thoughtful spirit and your gentle, caring touch. I thank the Lord for you today, for your angel heart of gold, for your words of guidance and support, for arms so quick to hold. I thank the Lord for you today in every thought and prayer and ask the Lord to bless you and to keep you in his care. That's how I felt about my grandmother because my grandmother was my go-to. She strung my beans by the bushel and she loved doing it. She made, when we owned Appalachian Memories, we made all kinds of things for um, Kroger and so many chain stores and my grandmother's precious hands made so many little lace puffs that we used on the bears we did. We did thousands and thousands of these bears and my grandmother's precious 88 year old hands sat there and made these. Now at the bottom of this that I was honoring Granny, there's also photos of, of um, JS's mom and my mom and uh, I'm trying to see who else is on there, me and Angela. But there's one photo in particular that is something I'm looking for the original and it's me in front of the Woodbridge Inn where Mama and I did that well curb. So um, I hope that we can find that original picture because I didn't, I can't find the original but the progress happened at one time. So that is so cool. And then there's one of Lily Jane Cordell who is JS's grandmother or as we called her Granny, she was 4'11", and she was a force to be reckoned with. So, and for you who don't know, the way I ended up in television in 2002, when my husband passed away, the Pickens County Progress came out to interview me about a house I was restoring. And it was an 1838 house, and uh, basically doubling the size of it and doing all these things to change it. Wanted to get it done before my husband passed. That didn't even come close. All I got done was the kitchen and the bathroom. Added a new bath. But, but it was so strange because the Pickens County Progress, Jeff Warren showed up on the porch, and we sat there on the porch. He did a, a full-page article. It was amazing. He did a great job. And then the TV stations started coming because people read the progress. That's what happened. People read the local newspaper. And the local newspaper is truly responsible for me being sitting here today because they did a story about the house we were restoring. And it was, it was just amazing because it was a, a house filled with love. And uh, I knew it was very important to my husband to maintain that house. And so after his death, I did that. And um, then the rest is history. But it is, uh, I love going through these old progress and I have stacks and stacks of them because my daughter saved. Anytime there was an article that included somebody she knew and loved, she cut out that article. So it, it was really precious to me. Now this is something that, I, I don't even know if this publication is still around, but it's called Pastimes and I'm gonna do some research on it today when I get off the air. Angela had this magazine, and um, we all love looking back. We love the days of yesteryear. And right now, I'm going to introduce you, if you haven't met James and Lucille Rich, you're about to, they could write a book about yesteryear because they are celebrating this summer, they will celebrate 67 years marriage. 
as an educator, Lucille has seen it all, done it all, been there, done that, and probably should have written the book about it. But we're going to share a, a visit with them now. It's in a couple of different parts because we did part and then she thought of something else she wanted to tell us and it was priceless and so precious. And I said, those are these moments. Get your phone out, get your iPad out, capture your grandmother, capture your mother. These are priceless memories and priceless moments. So right now we're going to go and if you don't know Miss Lucille Rich, you have missed a world of knowledge. We're going to visit with she and James, and then I'm going to come back to you, and we have some more really cool stuff today that we're going to share. So here we go to James and Lucille Rich and a, a precious, precious visit. Okay, we are back, and we're visiting with James and Lucille Rich, sweethearts of how many years? 66, almost 67 years. Almost 67. Miss Lucille, can you talk about some of your friends and the memories you have of Ball Ground? And then we're also going to talk about the Historical Society and how, did, how it's very, very important to maintain the history of Ball Ground. Right. Well, uh, my best friend growing up was Betty Brackett. Mm -hmm. She had a brother named Eddie and a brother named Billy. And we were just, we, we that hill behind where they lived, all the way up to the school was our playground. Mm -hmm. Because we lived in a small house up at the, uh, up at the pond. Mm -hmm. That's no longer there, is it? That's no longer there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and but Betty lived there where Shorty lives. That's, that was her childhood home. Right. And uh, her grandfather, of course, was Calvin Farmer. Because mm -hmm. Zonley was a farmer before she married. And uh, they had a pony named Star, and we rode it all over ball ground. And uh, we just knew everybody. I could go from house to house and tell you every person in every house wow. at that time. Did y'all skate through ball ground one time? Yes. Yes, I heard about that. Mm -hmm. We did. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine skating through ball ground today? Mm -hmm. No, no. No, now, the history of Ball Ground. How important was it for you to be instrumental in doing the Historical Society? Well, as we worked on the school reunion, a lot of questions came up, especially from younger people. What, what happened? Where was this? What, when was that happened? So I said, well, let's just have a meeting, a historical meeting. Mm -hmm. And so I said, how many people will come? A few hands went up. So I said, where could we meet? And I think, Jenny, are you the one that said we can meet at the city yeah. hall? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we just said, well, let's just meet. So we met down at city hall, and there was a small group of us. And they what year was that formed? What year? What year, Sam? 2012. 2012. And they elected me the first president. And, As rightly they should have. And, uh, and I was privileged and honored to serve as the first president. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rebecca Ray was uh, a good member of our group. And Boy, of course, we miss Sam her. Yes, yes, we Goodness. miss her. And uh, of course, Sandra was part of our group. And uh, Dr. Kitchens from the un from uh, Reinhardt University. He and I were old friends because I had done some work with Reinhardt. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got him interested in our group. And, and I actually, think he still goes. He's gonna be our speaker Tuesday night. Oh, he's, wonderful. He is, yes. Yeah. He's wonderful. our ad hoc too. He yeah. is, yes, he is, he is. Wonderful. Now, historically, what are your favorite buildings that are still in Ball Ground? What are some of your favorites? Favorite buildings that are still there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, James proposed to me oh. in Ball Ground Ballpark. Oh, I love that. How sweet is that? And uh, at that time, it didn't have a fence around it, and we were just pulled up in there, and he proposed. And you said, of course. And I said, no. <laughs> I said, I'll think about it. Oh. Because I had one more year to go in school, and I wanted to finish school. Mm -hmm. But I thought about it, and I had some family issues. So uh, after I thought about it, 
a couple of weeks or maybe three, uh, we were at, he was swinging me in a swing at Tate School. And uh, I said, you remember what you asked me? And he said, mm-hmm. And I said, my answer is yes. Precious. So we got married. How precious. And where did you first live? We first lived out, uh, out, uh, what's that man's name that we rented that house from? I don't remember. Out there, you know where we lived at first? Oh, no problem. Out, uh, out there by Kelly's. What was, what was that place? Oh, uh, Garn Edwards. Yeah, Garn Edwards. The Garn Edwards owned a little house. Uh, Do you remember what you paid for rent? Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. Wow. And we hung wallpaper up in that house and just fixed it just right. And of course, James was still working for Densmore. He was making twenty-five dollars a week. Wow. So they, when we we got married, they raised him to thirty. And uh, Mr. Dinsmore helped us get all of our furniture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He was a darling man, mm -hmm. Glenn Dinsmore. Yep, senior. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Glenn, Glenn Jr. is a pretty darling man, too. Yes, he He's is. He's a sweetheart. He's he a was sweetheart. just a little boy back yeah, then. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? You know, when we think about this, does it seem like yesterday to you that all those things happened? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. And I'm so glad. I'm so mm -hmm. thankful that I still remember it. Mm -hmm. Thank the Lord for good memories, mm -hmm. sweet memories, mm -hmm. precious memories. Precious memories. Now, what about the community of Ball Ground as far as the population? The first time I remember going there, my grandmother and I went to Hubbard's store. I was probably 17. What do you think the population was then, 60 years ago? What was the population of Ball Ground? When did it start growing? Uh, it's, it grew very slowly for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. It has recently just burst. You into... know what people love about Ball Ground? Mm -hmm. They have the greatest lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You can walk to town. You can take your kids with you. Right. You can leave your door unlocked. Don't tell anybody, but, right. you but you can. It is such a great community still today. Right. So we truly are preserving the past and embracing the future. That's wonderful. What do you want to see happen in Ball Ground today? I would like to, for it to remain a walking community. That's so important to us. So important. Now, do you know about the two new murals that went up this weekend in Ball Ground? No. You're going to be so proud of them. One of them is honoring Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. which was a business in Ball Ground that is no longer there. Right. And the other one is honoring the Cherokee. And mm -hmm. it is a beautiful, beautiful mural. Mm -hmm. As a teacher, are there things about Ball Ground that you wish students knew today? Are they teaching local history about the history of the Cherokee and Ball Ground? Are they teaching that? Did you teach that? I'm not years? sure. I did. Did you? Um, just because I'm a native of Ball Ground, see, so right. it was it just fit in with. Mm -hmm. Yes, I taught it. Now I was a Georgia history teacher uh, at the eighth grade level. I taught Georgia history as well as English mm -hmm. and reading. And do you still keep in touch with your students? Some of them, yeah. some of them yeah. I did. Yeah. Some of them I'm Facebook friends with. Mm -hmm. How many years did you teach? 30 years. And then I taught three years of uh, Georgia pre-K. That's amazing. Now in retirement, are you living your dream because you are still together and you're both relatively healthy? Right. Yeah. We recently moved here into this, uh, this is assisted living but it's uh, we're still individual, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, I feel like God just opened a door. I believe in going through the doors that God opens. Mm -hmm. And uh, years ago, a teacher of mine at Cherokee High School, Ms. Yarborough, uh, she was Georgia's Teacher of the Year wow. for the state. And someone asked her at a meeting I, I attended, what do you attribute your success? And she said, I went through every door 
that God opened. And so that just stuck with me. Mm -hmm. So when James became frail and the house became too much for me mm -hmm. and the preparing of the meals and the cleaning and the changing of the beds, all of that, mm -hmm. I felt like God just opened a door and said, Lucille, go forward. And someone said, Lucille, are you sad? And I said, no, I'm rejoicing mm -hmm. uh, because God opened the door. Mm -hmm. And we brought our own furniture. This it, looks like we walked into your home. Right. Yeah. Of course, we couldn't bring but a third, a fourth, a fifth, mm -hmm. a, an eighth of it. Mm -hmm. The kids helped us move, our children helped us move, and our grandchildren. And then they went back and got what they wanted. And they're still, they keep saying, Mom, I can't believe you had all this stuff. <laughs> I'm a pack rat. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about, you were talking earlier about Zona Lee and the fact that your daughter lived in the Calvin Farmer house right. when she left home. Talk about that right. a little bit. Tammy wanted to be out on her own after she graduated high school, but I couldn't quite let her go to the big city. But Zona Lee it was a lifelong friend of mine and she treated me, she treated me just like she treated Betty. Mm -hmm. She just treated me like her daughter. And she had that apartment for rent and... Uh, Do you remember how much it rented for? Goodness, I think it was just $15 a month. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't remember for sure, but it was almost nothing. Mm -hmm. Because Tammy was just working as a dental assistant and uh, didn't make much. And, uh, but she and Kim rented that upstairs. And uh, they, they talked about it so much. Did you have happy memories in that home with Zona Lee? Yes, many happy memories. Mm -hmm. Zona Lee was a good cook. And uh, I ate many meals with them. I've heard rumors about her deviled eggs. Everybody yeah. said she did amazing deviled eggs. Yeah. yeah. She was a good cook. Yeah. Do you miss those old friends? I do miss my old friends. Mm -hmm. Do you know almost all my old friends are dead? Mm -hmm. Because I'm 84. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Betty was that bright and shining light for everybody. And and when she lost her battle with cancer, it, it, it was just almost unbelievable because she you could ride by and she'd be sitting in that window and throw up her hand and smile and just what what a joy to know. Mm -hmm. I think that's why it was important to us to capture time with the two of you. Mm -hmm. Because as you celebrate now, when is your anniversary? July the seventh. So July the seventh this year you will celebrate sixty seven years. Yes. That is awesome. That is awesome. Thank you for talking to us today. And is there anything about Ball Ground you'd like to share that you want people to continue to do? Is there something you can encourage? What do you see for the future of the history of Ball Ground? I think the future's good. I think the Ball Ground Garden Club is doing a lot of good work in Ball Ground. And the Botanical Garden is a great asset. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Historical Society should thrive and grow because after all, yesterday is our history now. That's right. Uh, so your history is what's already happened. So uh, I, I would love to see it continue. Well, our goal is to grow the historical society because it's, I hate to say it, but we're that generation that we're gonna be gone and we wanna encourage younger people to join. And exactly. it's been kind of hard. So can you give us some advice? What can we do to grow the historical society? Mm. Is there a campaign you would do? Something that we need to know? Mm. Well, um, some something along the line of a, let's have a party for ball ground or something mm -hmm. uh, to get people together mm -hmm. and then let people that can speak get get them fired up you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think that's important yeah yeah and we are losing so many of those and um, i think raymond cheshire lives here where you do yes, doesn't he? He does. yes 
Yeah, there's so many precious people from Ball Ground that we want to talk to, and I can't say thank you enough for doing this. I know that uh, it's it's a precious time for y'all and in these last years and enjoying every minute of it, and I want to say a happy early anniversary. Well, thank you. That's a very special year, isn't it? So happy, happy, very special, happy early anniversary. Thank you, James, for doing this. I appreciate it both. Okay, you know what? Surprise, we're back because we thought of something that's very, very important to the Historical Society, and that's Georgia Marble. And I understand that there's a little history with the Lincoln Memorial and your family. Yes, James' dad was a long, long time worker, a polisher mm -hmm. at the Georgia Marble Company in Nelson, and he worked on that memorial. The Lincoln Memorial. The Lincoln Memorial. Wow. Wow. Now, Lucille, I wonder, I've, I've heard, I know that we've made deliveries to New York City with marbles. So even in New York City, y'all think about that. In New York City, people are walking on pieces of Georgia marble in downtown Manhattan. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And Ingram Trucking, that oh, was yeah. so important to Ball Ground. And they hauled marble near and far. Right. And, and that is that is truly a piece of Georgia history mm -hmm. and, and certainly a ball ground history and Nelson history and the train. We were talking earlier today about the train and how important the train was to, to move that marble here mm -hmm. and there and yonder and going all the way into Marietta with it. Mm -hmm. And then to think about the trucking industry and, and hauling tons and tons and tons out of there. I wonder how many tons have been mined from Georgia Marble. I, wouldn't it be amazing, it be to, hear amazing a number? to hear that? Yeah, yeah. Now, did James ever work in the mines or just his dad? James didn't work in the mines. He worked in the company there at Nelson. Mm -hmm. That is still there today. It's still there today. It's still there today. I'm doing a little yeah. bit of yeah. things, yeah. And doing some amazing engraving. They're yes. doing some amazing. Uh, Tim Hyde is one of their talented, talented engravers. Just amazing, amazing work. So. Well, I'm glad we came back and, and talked about this because this Tuesday night, Dr. Kitchens is going to talk about the Lincoln Memorial and the fact that it is Georgia Marbles. So right, it is. Thank you again. Thanks, y'all. Okay, y'all, you know those stories that don't end? Well, we got a little something else, and I want to share this because I never had the pleasure or the joy of meeting this man, but can you tell me a story about somebody that you thought was a pretty good guy? Yes. Roy D. Haynes. He was later uh, mayor of Ball Ground, but before he was ever mayor, he was the stepfather to my best friend, Betty Brackett. And on Saturdays, Betty and I would walk to town. We were like in maybe the fifth grade, and uh, he would give Betty a quarter, and with that quarter, she could buy a hot dog at Dale Grife's restaurant. Mm -hmm. She could buy a hot dog, a pack of potato chips and a Coca-Cola. And uh, he couldn't stand for me to walk along with her and not have a quarter myself. So he, he said, now, this so you just take this, this quarter, and he would give me a quarter every Saturday. How precious. And I have told those Haynes children how much that meant to me. Mm -hmm. That was the first Coke I ever had. Well, I know those Haynes children, and they must must be a combination of their parents because they're pretty good folks, aren't they? Yes, they are. Amazing, amazing people. Thank you for sharing that. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says welcome to North Georgia. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Take the back roads and really get to know North Georgia. 
combine the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Meet The Scan, a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you. But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at savedbythescan.org. back okay boy what an honor to have been selling these mountains for 35 years I've had some beautiful properties some beautiful places and some some things that just said wow and I was like oh I really love that I'd love to be there I'd love to share that right now I have something I want to share and I'm so proud Tim came down with the drone on a day that it was clear it wasn't completely clear a little bit of haze going on but he did some amazing footage of what is about to be the possibility of your new home. We're gonna be selling home sites and we have the greatest builder in line. This is a name that you have known and trusted for over 50 years in building and we are so very excited that this is gonna happen in the near future. We're gonna show you just our new commercial. This is just a little blippet of what Tim's been working on and this is Farmer's Crossing. This is the ridge at Farmer's Crossing in downtown Ball Ground. Absolutely beautiful, excited. I had no idea that downtown Ball Ground had mountain views. We can see Forsyth, Dawson, and Pickens County from Ball Ground, Georgia. That is just so strange to me. But 
We're going to be sharing and selling that property in the very near future, and I hope that you will come and be a part of that and come and be our neighbor. Okay, y'all, it's the holidays coming up. Spring break, Easter is going to happen, and I had to go back to one of my very, very favorite Heart of the Homes, and this is one that Fred Wyndham was, of course, directing, producing. I'm so honored to have worked all the years that I did with that precious gentleman who sadly has gone on to be with the Lord, and boy, do I miss him. But Tim stepped in, and we're about to be doing some cooking programs in a very beautiful historical home. It is all about preserving the past. It is all about embracing the future, and that's what I love. I love when I go to my kitchen and I use my grandmother's dishes, my great aunt's dishes, my great great grandmother's butter dish. I love parts of the past and embracing the future. As I look back on this program, Mama Lucy gave me a really cool recipe, and I said, you do what and how, and we can do that on, on TV in four minutes? Well, we pulled it off. Her sweet nephew, Sergeant Major Tony Gayton, was with me, and uh, we did a recipe that I absolutely love to share with kids. And while your kids are on spring break, if the grandkids are visiting, I think it's time that you try this recipe. It is not only yummy, but it is just super fun and super fast. So it is called Nana's Nest, and Mama Lucy showed me how to do this, and I never forgot the smile on her face with the finished product. She was so proud of us, so here we go. Martin, tonight on Heart of the Home, I'm so honored. I want my guest to introduce himself to you. Hello, I'm uh, Sergeant Major Tony Gate in the United States Army. Tony lives in Tate, Georgia, and Tony and I spent last Easter together, but it was an email, wasn't it? Yeah. Email, yes. you were in Baghdad, That's you right. attended a sunrise service in Baghdad while we were here attending church. Um, you're home, you're safe, I'm so grateful. Communicating with you was wonderful because I knew when the guys were coming home, we were placing yellow ribbons for your um, group of fellows that came home. When did 48th Brigade? 48th Brigade, yes. 48th Brigade um, safely came home. I was so pleased. I was so pleased with the neighborhood. Everybody turned out and everybody supported you. And it was such a pleasure to know that we knew, you know, when you were coming, when the guys were going to be there. It was easy to coordinate because we could email across the world. We could email. So it was wonderful. It was one of the most special days in my life. I guarantee uh, and you. I and it was for Jasper. It was for Jasper. Thank you. Um, he's here for Easter. And we're going to share a recipe that my adopted mama, Lucy Van Doren, created. It's called Nana's Nest. The ingredients for this recipe are a um, flour tortilla shell. And I must tell you, you can't use the fat free. You need the fat. So... And then um, with that, we um, will fry that, then cinnamon, sugar, ice cream. We're going to decorate it with coconut that we're going to dye green that will look like grass. Okay. That'll be your job. <laughs> the topping ingredients are fresh pineapple, kiwi, strawberries. And do I get to be the general in this episode? Can I be your hey, boss? You're in charge. Oh, I'm in charge. I, I'm I never in charge. Well. Oh, good, good. We're starting with a tortilla shell. We're going to fold it in half. The pattern is a star because when this comes out, it actually looks like a jagged edge that an egg would come out of when an egg is hatched. All right. And you're going to cut this for me. Boy, you mind good. I like men who take orders. I bet your wife likes that too. You got it? There you I go. Want that pattern. There you go. There you go. Just hold it down until it cooks. How, long, how do I know how, when it's done? Just takes about probably 30 to 45 seconds. Okay. So now we're going to take it out with this appliance. There you go, so you can drain the grease. Cool. That's pretty good. I think you're hired. <laughs> Sit it down there. Right. Now, we've taken our hot nest, and we are going to cover it in cinnamon and sugar. That was quick, huh? You did a good job. You did a good job. Now, we're going to make grass. We're going to make right. coconut grass. Now, I want you to put me about three drops of green food coloring in there. Right. We're going to start with about three drops. Okay, our grass is done. We're going to put a little bit of grass around the nest, and then we'll put a little bit on top of it. But we are going to start with a scoop of peach ice cream. Now, your job is to garnish this, and I want you okay. to just be creative. I'm not going to fuss. I don't care how you do it. I don't care what you do. You just do what you think you would like. Pineapple, kiwi, strawberries. 
Tony, we're almost finished. What does a nest need? Well, you got bird eggs, but no birds, so how I see a bird. A peep. Wow. All right. There you go. There you go. Guys, this has been, honestly, my favorite heart of the home, my best guest. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of what you do for a living. Thank you so much for everything you do for Thank our country. Um, Y'all keep in touch. Email your soldiers. Remember, they're over there fighting for us. Keep in touch with them. Thank you again. Thanks. Love you. Wow, looking at that cross behind me, Whew. my sweet Angela always worked on our set. She always decorated. She always did everything I needed to make sure we were ready to go on television at a given moment. I'd say, Ange, our theme is this today, our theme is that, and she'd go to work. She loved her job. She loved her life, and sadly, it ended with suicide. And when I saw the purple draping around that cross, I thought about purple is the color for suicide prevention. Please remember today, there are soldiers who have served our country who will end their lives today because they can't deal with the trauma that they brought home from them with them. They can't forget what they saw. When we think about what was seen in Nashville, Tennessee, just a couple of days ago, as um, teachers, children were slaughtered. Um, thank God for those two young police officers. They were in their 20s who came in there and, and ended the situation. And uh, we need to understand that there are moments of depression, there are moments of sadness. But I wanna choose every single day, I'm gonna try, if I can remember, if I can get my brain in gear, I'm gonna try to do a thought of the day. And today's thought is, and this is something that I just saw it on Facebook and I loved it, people don't abandon the people they love, people abandon the people they were using. And that has happened to so many people. I get so many calls from women who say, well, you know, I thought this was real. I thought he cared. I thought this, I thought that. And I've heard so many amazing stories of survival that they, they got through it and they, they were okay. But um, often not, often it ends in suicide. And so today, say a prayer for everybody out there who is struggling because there are so many people struggling. Now this gentleman doesn't struggle with anything. This sweetheart, this is, he is so cool. He is a professor at Reinhardt, and Joe Kitchens is one of those guys that you just want to hang with and spend time with. He did the presentation for the Historical Society last night, and he talked about the Lincoln Memorial and the fact that that is Georgia Marble. How cool is that? How cool is that? And they also talked about the history of all the monuments that were done that are in the Nelson Ball Ground area that were done by the, by the Italian craftsmen who were brought over here. It was just a great, great program, and thank you, Joe Kitchens, and thank you, Sandra, for putting that program together. She's doing a great job as the new president of the Historical Society. Now, I want to share something uh, with you. We've got a little music by Mr. Sanford, Mr. Sanford, Mr. L.J. His name's Dwight Sanford, but he's Mr. L.J. I think about memories, and I think about Mother's Day's coming up, and your kids will be coming to the house. A lot of moms aren't going to be there. Um, my mom, my grandmother are gone, my sister are gone. You look at the women that you admired, they're gone. And so this year, make it a very special Mother's Day, whether it's with you and your children, or if you have to visit a cemetery, make it a special moment. That's what it's about, those memories. Supper time at our house was all, sometimes something that mama just dreamed up. She'd say, well, it's kind of in the neighborhood of, and I'm like, no, mama, that is not in the neighborhood of. Mother was a very creative cook. Granny was a very predictable cook. It was fried chicken, always fried chicken thighs, biscuits and gravy. Lord have mercy what I would give to have that. And that's what it's about. Life is about the memories that we treasure and the moments of that time spent with very, very special people. So as we approach Easter, as we approach Mother's Day, a lot of memories, a lot of feelings will be flooding your hearts. I lost so many dear friends with Alzheimer's and dementia. My grandmother and all of her sisters ended up getting it in their late 80s and early 90s, which was very, very strange, all but one of them. And she lived to be 96 and was sharp as a tack. It's very strange how that horrible disease hits. So if you have those moments with your mom that you think maybe she's slipping, maybe she's forgetting, sit down and record everything you possibly can. I have a bag of goodies that I'm gonna be going through with Dom that's handwritten recipes. 
If your mama wrote down handwritten recipes, you get them, you frame them, you copy them, you share them with grandkids, and you cherish them. Because those are things that when her memory's gone, she won't remember how to tell you how to make that precious cake that she's made for 30 years. When her memory's gone, she won't remember what she put in her amazing chicken and dressing. So you sit down with her today and you video and you save it and, and you make your own precious moments. Now we're going to go now to this song and it's supper time. There's something about supper time in the South. It just makes you smile. Here we go. Many years ago in days of childhood, I used to play till the evening sun would come. Then wandering down an old familiar pathway I could hear my mother call at set of sun Come home, come home, it's supper time The shadows lengthen fast Supper time. We're going home at last. Some of my fondest memories of my childhood were woven around supper time. And mom, I remember how you used to call from the steps of our old home place. You'd always say. Come home, son. It's supper time. What I'd give to hear that just one more time. But you know, time has woven a realization of truth that's even more thrilling. And that's when we hear that call from the portals of glory to come home for supper time. When all of God's children gather around the table with the Lord Himself, and we celebrate the greatest supper time of all. Come home, come home, it's supper time. The shadows lengthen fast. Supper time. We're going home at last. Lordy me, did that not look good? I think I'll take a little dressing, a little sweet potatoes, and a little English peas. Oh my goodness. Okay, y'all. When the grandkids are there, you want to keep them occupied and you want to do something fun. This is a recipe that my friend Doreen Lee, who went to be with the Lord when she was about 95, 96, she um, was from Kankakee, Illinois, and an amazing, amazing cook. More than that, an amazing, amazing person. And so her daughter, Lana Wiswell, shared this recipe with me years and years and years ago. And we're going we're gonna to share it again. And when we did it on Heart of the Home the first time, probably 12 years ago, 13, 14 years ago, these kids were little kids. They're now grown adults. But um, I remember them looking at me like, you can't put plastic in boiling water. Yeah, you can. The freezer bags you can, which is really weird to me. But we're going to share this recipe. It's called Eggs in a Bag, and it is so much fun to do with your grandkids. So here we go. This is another short segment of Heart of the Home, one of Lori Tipton's finest moments because we were featuring all of her nieces and nephews. Here we go. Johnson and Darian are going to help me with a very simple recipe that was submitted by Miss Lana Wiswell from Jupiter, Florida. Lana and her mom watch us weekly on streaming videos and she promised me this was a recipe that children would like to do. So we're going to do this and it's going to teach us a little bit. It's going to teach us a little bit about hot and cold. So you ready guys? Yep. You ready? Good. Okay, let's start. The ingredients for this item called eggs in a bag 
or eggs, and any condiments you want. I like salsa, you like ham, and you like cheese. So we're gonna combine our ingredients. We're gonna drop it in this freezer bag, and in 13 minutes, we're gonna have an omelet. Isn't that wild? We don't use a frying pan, we don't use any butter, and we're gonna cook it in boiling water. Okay guys, let's assemble our bags. The first thing we're gonna do is put your name on it, so when the bags come out of the water, you know what's yours. Okay, Allura, how do you spell your name? A L L U A. Allura. Okay. When we put your ingredients in here, you'll know this is yours when it comes out of the hot boiling water. Okay, guys? Now, we're going to put two eggs in each one, and we're going to start with Miss Allura. So, Miss Allura, tell me what ingredients you want, sweetheart. You want ham? Do you want cheese? Ham and cheese, okay. We're gonna have ham and cheese. And this is so neat. And where did my fork go? Darian, there you go. My helper's hiding my fork. Okay. And remember guys, this is, you time it and you boil this for 13 minutes. Miss Allura, here we go. That fork looks just like gold. It is gold, isn't it? It looks like gold. It came from Cinderella's castle. Right. Okay, Allura, you hang on to yours. Don't drop it. Hold on. Okay, Johnson, what do you want in your sweetheart? Ham and, Ham and cheese. And remember, guys, do two eggs. I tested this last week on my growing boys who were racing go-karts, and I thought three eggs would be good for them. That didn't work. It didn't get done in 13 minutes. Ham and cheese for Miss Johnson. I think this is such a neat idea. When they submitted it, I thought, well, somebody's bumped their head. You can't boil anything in a plastic bag, but I've done it three times now, and it's really neat. Miss Johnson, hang on to yours. There you go, hold it at the top. Okay. Darian, what do you want in yours, honey? Same kind. Same kind, ham and cheese. Y'all aren't gonna stray. Nobody wants bacon? Nope. Ham and cheese. We're gonna get it. There you go. Two eggs, remember? Two eggs. You know, last time Allura was here, we made egg salad. Okay, Darian, there's yours. Now the trick is we're gonna drop these in boiling water for 13 minutes, okay? Okay, I'm gonna drop one in first, and then I want y'all to follow me. Now drop your bags in. There you go. And in 13 minutes, we'll have a perfect omelet. I'm gonna take these out of the water because I don't want the kids to get burned, and it really is hot. Remember, boiling water, be very careful when you do this. But it's been fun, and I think the kids have enjoyed this one. And it is something you can do for Mother's Day and not mess up the kitchen because look at that, a perfect omelet and it didn't mess up the kitchen and there's no fat, we use no butter, no olive oil. Folks, have a wonderful Mother's Day. Enjoy your family, enjoy your friends. Thank you so much for coming back to see me and y'all promise you'll come back. Bye-bye, happy Mother's Day everybody. See you again on Heart of the Home soon. What a sweet memory, what a sweet memory. Those kids are grown now. Gosh, I would love to see them. We need to have a reunion program. That would be so, so sweet. If your grandkids are coming, get them in the kitchen, drag out your great-grandmother's dishes. I've got my grandmother's old sifter. I've got her grater. I've got her tea strainer. So many just little things that bring comfort. And so if you're fortunate enough that you've got some of that stuff, treasure it, take care of it, and, and know that it is very special and pass on just those little tidbits that your grandmother might have taught you. My granny taught me that when she finished stringing my beans, she didn't care if it was 11.30 at night, she'd call and say, Shug, your beans are ready, you can come get them now. Granny, it's 11.30, well, just come on up here and get them. You can get them to cooking. Okay, Granny, listen to your grandmother. What words of wisdom and what precious, precious memories. Speaking of precious memories, I have a dear friend that we're going to show just a little bit of. <clears throat> She's been dealing with some serious medical issues, but she is strong. She is amazing, and I want to say, Cheryl, I love you, and I am so thankful that many, many years ago, 
you and I became friends. We've both gone through some crap, and we've come out of it. And I love that you are still here, still still making it. And uh, I hope that these health issues you're dealing with right now just come back and you're going to be as good as new. Here we go with just a little visit from a very beautiful lady that I love a lot. Did you love her clothes? I, I did. Them. And Absolutely. you know, I took home a dress from the event. Uh -huh, and I did. wore it. Yes. I wore it to lunch. And it was a Sherry Martin. It was. And it had your label in it. And it was adorable. Yeah. And it was a great small size, much smaller than I normally wear, so I like that style a lot. Uh -huh. Well, it was a fun night. Um, mm -hmm. It also, y'all knew that I crashed after that. Yes. I had a lot of things happening that just, and I don't know why, and I don't know why I kept letting the past do bad things to me, but um, not going to happen anymore, you good, know, and, and, and when I talked to you yesterday, um, I'd been crashing. It'd been a rough, rough week. Cheryl is the beautiful lady sitting closest to me, and um, prayers please for her because she is dealing with some medical things that uh, she has been through so much. And I think she gets stronger with each procedure and each crazy thing that comes her way. And I said, you know, if life throws you a curve, just get it and play with it. So I want to remind you, the American Legion, post 149 Pickens County, again, this is Friday night. Please come out and be there on March 31st, and this is to raise money and raise awareness and to help the scholarship program. And um, the entertainer is Connor Lore. He does a variety of Legends tribute shows. So they said it's really, really good, and I haven't checked it out still. I need to find time to do that. But uh, I want you to come out and, again, help raise money, help raise awareness, and please, please, please today do something to support our veterans. They are supporting us every single moment. When I looked at the thing that we did from the Pickens County Progress, and I, I thought about that, and I thought about how many of these people that were there on that wall that we were doing a tribute, how many of those folks are gone today? Because many of them were, a lot of them were World War II veterans. And uh, again, you think 20 years, 20 years makes a big difference. So to the Pickens County Progress, thank you. Thank you for, for being that old family newspaper that is still in business many, many years. When you look at what happens on Twitter, it is instant. When you look at what happens on Facebook, it is instant. When you look at what happens on Facebook, a whole lot of it's a bunch of, I don't know, it's, it's gone to a point that you're seeing lots and lots of commercials, and it's, it's very strange to me, and Vicki and I will be sitting there talking about a different kind of brand of something we like, and then that commercial pops up on your phone. You know that they're listening, and it's scary. It's just scary to me. So I kind of liked when the Pickens County Progress came out on uh, Wednesday evening and you went by and you picked it up for whatever it cost then and, and you ran home and you read it and you looked at the obituaries first. Everybody always looked at the obituaries because most people don't have time to call the obit line. But you grab your progress and that, that's part of our past. And let's preserve that past. Let's keep supporting those local newspapers because those local newspapers have been around for us when we needed them before there was Facebook, before there was Twitter. So I'm going to leave you now where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet. It's, it's good to look back on good friends. It's good to know that Cheryl is still here. It is good to know that we have so many amazing memories with so many of you. And what an honor to, to show you James and Lucille Rich as we will celebrate their 67th anniversary on July the 7th. I'll see you again soon, only on ETC.